anybody can make somebody tired, but can you make them great? And if you're coaching, you're making them great. Good afternoon, guys. This is Eric LeClaire over at In the Trenches. On behalf of Push Press, I am totally honored today to be bringing on uh, an individual who up until recently, I had a chance to just watch or read about or hear about online. And over the last week, I've now had a chance to, uh, to touch base and connect with another Eric. But Eric Mitchell runs a Parisi Speed School franchise. And I know about five owners now that run those facilities. And on the flip side, there's something that else that he's involved himself in, and that is training for warriors. And I'm super excited to jam on both of those today. Uh, a handful of folks that I know from Parisi's are operating those, sometimes standalone or sometimes in conjunction with different fitness avenues. So today I'm, again, super honored to have you on board, Eric. Thank you so much. And for those that don't know anything about Parisi or anything about training for warriors, take a second and kind of introduce our, introduce our audience to you. Sure. Um, well, first, I'm, I'm honored to be a part of this. And I was, I was incredibly excited to be able to talk to you guys about uh, what I do and how it ties directly into what we're all trying to accomplish in the fitness industry. Um, so I've been coaching for 32 years now, and I have been a Parisi Speed School owner, which is youth sports performance that Bill Parisi created in 1992 um, that was geared towards developing an athlete uh, completely from a lot of different ways, uh, physically and mentally. Uh, it was something that if you look at it, 1992 is not that long ago for some of us. It's a lot longer. But uh, I bought a Parisi franchise in 2005. And keep in mind, I've been involved in sports performance in the Philadelphia area for many years, working with NFL football agents and with pro tennis players. But and, and also doing personal training. I cut my teeth under the Nautilus principles for many years, uh, super slow to failure. And what I found is... I, I missed my calling wasn't there just counting numbers and literally that's what you did in the Nautilus principle yep. the training sessions are 22 minutes long and you counted reps literally counting to 10 uh, for seven or eight reps man Sports that brings back such old I, love it yeah it was it was interesting meeting Arthur Jones I got to interact I got to meet him as well uh, but uh, I'm, I'm thankful for that because it gave me the ability to understand what I really wanted to do. And that was to get involved in sports performance. Started training uh, and Bill Parisi contacted me in 2005. And the rest is history. I've had a Parisi speed school since then. I'm one of the senior coaches now. So I, I actually go around certifying staff. So though we're, we're not right now, we haven't been traveling much, but we are actually going to do something in September. And through that relationship with Parisi, I met Martin Rooney. And in meeting Martin Rooney, was able to learn and, uh, from him about a unique way to train adults. And I knew right away, Eric, when he formed Training for Warriors, I'm very proud to say that I was the first affiliate in the entire world for Training for Warriors. And okay. Training for Warriors is a system that was designed for adult fitness that sprang from the mixed martial arts world. But really addresses uh, the training in the same way that you you approach sports performance. And so I have been training, like I said, uh, kids and adults for very, for many, many years, but I am so happy to be in two systems, two systems that can help me help more people in my community. You and I talked about this before when we were just chatting that why I say coach is because uh, the word coach is going to impact people's lives much further down the line than simply someone training somebody. And that's why I think coaching is so critically important for, for, for what we do in our careers. So in a nutshell, that's what I do. But if you start to ask me why I do it, that's a, that's a whole nother thing. Whole nother episode, right? Oh, I know. Yes. I mean, there's, that's, it runs in your blood, in your heart, in your like right. 100%. So if, classically our audience will sit anywhere from the the uh, the boutique fitness facility to the sure. classic strength and conditioning facility a powerlifting facility even weightlifting gyms crossfitting affiliates we have a couple of parisi speed schools we're picking up a handful of mma facilities and some brazilian jiu-jitsu schools uh, a couple of rock climbing facilities i mean i think push press just broke about 1200 gyms 
not too long ago. So the audience is starting to get pretty diverse. Sure. What, what makes Parisi Speed School stand out in comparison to the many, many other uh, youth sports performance methodologies or offerings in a local area? So like we're in the LA area, Los Angeles yeah. area. Um, give me the differentiator for the market. Sure, I think that, that systems is one, is one element of that. Okay. Uh, it's systems that have been developed for, the, for over 20 years. So they're locked into the industry. They've been around for as long as sports performance really, and you think about it, sports performance has not been around that long. It's right. literally in the late 80s and early 90s is when it really started. And it really started to magnify by systems probably in the mid 2000s. Not only that, what our leadership team has brought to the table is a lot of evidence-based speed training. So now when I say speed training, you've got to put strength in there as well. So it's not just where it's somebody building programming. It is evidence-based programming from scientists, from exercise physiologists, across a lot of different spectrums. So we're, we're currently working with some of the greatest speed coaches, and I would tell you on the planet, at a lot of very high levels, yet sure. it brings it down to the layman's level where a coach can learn the systems. And if they apply the systems correctly and they, and they really understand it and get kids to understand the, simpli the simplicity of the complexity of speed training, right. I, I, don't, I don't know if I've encountered anything greater than this. I, I have a great story to tell you because I got to tell you this. Yeah, I, had a, yep. I, had a, I had a pro day guy I was working with. He was only up for two weeks. He was a defensive back from Vanderbilt. He was up for two weeks. We were working on 5-10, 5 drills and 40-yard dash. Okay. He had to go back down to Vanderbilt, and he had to work with D1, which is the place down in Tennessee. And yep. he calls me two days later, and he says, Eric, I got this great story to tell you. He goes, Coach, they asked me, who were you working with up north for your 5-10, 5? And he said, yeah, I was working with this Parisi Speed School. And they said, don't change anything we can't help you develop anything greater than that love it i love hearing that and, and and the thing is like i even said to him hey i'd love to talk to your coach I'd love to share ideas with your coach at d1 how do we make you better because it wasn't about me right and i think what parisi represents it's about others it's not about us and so i listen i would i never begrudge somebody else's program but I think if you have, you always want to have very honest, honest conversations with yourself as a coach, what are you doing to make others better? And I, I have never found in all my years anything better. Now, I like other systems. If the coach is great, if you have a great coach, man, anything's terrific. Yep, they can move across. Yep. Absolutely, and incorporate new things. And that's why I say, if you ask me, that's what differentiates Parisi from everybody else. I love it. I absolutely love it. Now, do you coexist both of your programs inside one facility or do you have two separate facilities? We, we coexist inside the facilities. So we're standalone in a sports complex. Just to give you some, some background of mine, I was in a very, very big sports complex for 11 years. Very large, uh, 11 outdoor fields, 127,000 square feet of indoor space. It was an old airport. Wow. And yeah, it was incredible. But after 11 years, they made a decision, hey, we want to go in a different direction. We don't, we, we're not going to renew your lease. I built a brand new facility. Uh, it was beautiful. It was, it was minted out. It was too small. Oh, no way. And I was able to actually get out of that place and go into another sports complex. And we've actually thrived ever since then. Um, so I've been through three facilities since 2016. Wow. But but you know what? You got to move forward. I mean, Always. if you don't, yep. you're, you're, you're sunk in our business. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. Yeah. So I want to circle back to you. Sure. Okay. A, a coach's role and from a leadership role, yeah. is there anyone through your formal training, whether it be academic, whether it be professional, whether it be a mix of sport coaching or, you know, sure from high school or college or uncle, grandfather, grandmother, someone, somewhere, where do you pin your drive on? Is there anyone that imprinted upon you work ethic, integrity, discipline? Sure. Talk me through some of that. So one of my, my sports mentors, uh, one of my 
uh, mentors in training was a gentleman named Kevin Tolbert. Uh, Kevin is currently the head football strength coach at Bowling Green, but he was with Harbaugh from Stanford to San Francisco to Michigan. But I worked with Kevin. If people look up Kevin Tolbert on the internet about hammer strength and about strength training and Dr. Ken Leisner and Arthur Jones, you're going right. to see Kevin Tolbert. And I trained with Kevin and worked with Kevin for five years. He was one of my best friends. And he influenced me because you, you didn't give up on yourself in training. You didn't give up on anybody you were working with that you were training, but he really instilled in me a belief in myself. And I'll never forget. I remember in 1997, he said to me, he said, Eric, look, you, you, you want to work with athletes. And I, you know, I, he was right. And I took a chance, quit where I was working and started training, literally doing some one-on-ones with some athletes. And it just fell into that. I happened to be training one guy who worked with professional tennis players and I started training professional tennis players from that point on. So Kevin, Kevin was a major influence in the direction I wanted to go in. Um, but, but, but Eric, I would say that, that uh, Bill Parisi and Martin Rooney were the ones who really, in my modern coaching era, and I was, I was older than Martin, uh, same age as Bill, they influenced me to deliver more uh, just to deliver more to people. And that was the key. I love it. I, I love finding out where folks derive a lot of their, their own internal mission or their own internal vision from. And I love hearing individuals, mentors, that can be super meaningful because now you have a chance to in turn embrace an entire new generation of coaches and leaders, staff, team members, and so on. Absolutely. How did you progress through at Parisi to go from owning a, owning a standalone to now working on the staff to do certifications sure. that work? Can any Parisi owner do that? Or was that available because you tested for it or requested? Well, no, I think what happened was, is now you've got a, 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 a performance coach can actually get to the point of being a senior coach. Uh, there's, a, there's a rigorous process to get there. I just happened to be at first in a group of individuals that were so dedicated to the, we always say to the black and red, that we really kind of ingrained the culture of Parisi into our systems. So we were able to express that. And it's very interesting. If you look at the coaching experience of all the senior coaches, we have over a hundred years of coaching experience. And so looking at that, most of us, I, I, listen, I'm 52 years old. And, and I have some colleagues who are in their 40s and, uh, and we've, we've, we've created this culture, but anybody, this is a great thing. And I tell even my interns this, that anybody can, can achieve this status. Anybody can get to the point. And here's the key. Do you communicate with kids and their parents well? Do you relay information to people in a way that makes it easier and more comfortable for them to to, do, to understand what they're trying to train for. The stress that's on kids nowadays. It's huge. Kids, it's, yep. it's unbelievable, Eric. Not even with COVID. Now we're talking about just, what you mean, even just in sports, the pressure that's on them. So I tell all of my coaches, anything you want to accomplish in this industry, in, 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 whether it be Paris or for that matter, in the, in the whole sports performance industry, you can do it. In fact, one of my, my program director, and uh, she's an awesome woman. She made a decision during COVID to go out to Minnesota where her boyfriend is. She's young, she's 26 years old. She's not coming back, but she works for corporate now. Wow. So she does stuff. And I said, I said to her all along, you are destined, I said, to be more than the program director of my facility. Right, right. You saw it in her and said, go. Yeah. Like Yes, absolutely. And I want that in my staff. I want them to believe in themselves. Uh, so yeah, any, I, anybody can get to that level for sure. So let's so let's pretend I'm in, here in LA and I and I'm running a I'm running a strength conditioning gym or I'm running a CrossFit facility. And now I'm I'm hearing I'm reading I'm studying I'm looking at the other strength coaches in the Parisi world. How would I get involved? What would be the easiest way for me to learn about certification? Talk about a franchise? What are the qualifications that I would need to meet? Right. to meet your expectations? Well, it, listen, I mean, I think it's very simple that it, it would be reaching out to anybody in the corporate team 
uh, at the Parisi. Parisi headquarters is in Franklin, New Jersey, Franklin Lakes, New Jersey. It's reaching out to them. It's reaching out to me. It's reaching right. out to it, it, so on this, you know, if someone was interested, they could certainly reach out to me and talk to me about it, and I would get them in front of the right people. Again, what's really great about Parisi, it's very similar to what's happening with Push Press, is that it's, it's family. So right. you would get someone say, oh, I talked to Eric Mitchell. They'd be like, Boom, let's, let's set up a time that we can, we can do a discovery day. We can, they can do a discovery week up at our corporate offices and learn about what, what is it like to be a Parisi owner. Now, here's the cool thing about Parisi. Not only do you have to, own, you, you can do franchise, you can do license, but you can also do a coaching preference, which is a lot easier buy-in where you don't have a territory, but you are certified as a Parisi coach. You go through the same certification process. So there's a, there's a different barrier now uh, in terms of the learning. And what's really cool, and you, what I love about Parisi, again, is we're, on, we're, we're with Perform Better. We do presentations for Perform Better. We have connections uh, with so many different companies to build coaching awareness. I so love it. You can, yeah, you can still be a – you got your CrossFit, but you have a Parisi model that's within your CrossFit. So it, right. just, it makes sense. So what I have to be, and I'm asking this on behalf of the, when I say we or I, would I have to be only working at a pre facility or do you have your pre coaches that choose the coaching option? Can they work anywhere and run a pre program inside of wherever they're at? Yeah. So that would be that coaching option that if it, you, you, if somebody approached a, a gym or they approach somebody else that, so I got, I have an advantage where I am because I'm, st I'm a franchise. So I still have some territorial protection but listen there's a in where i live there's a there's a pre certified coach who called me and said hey eric do you want to help run a track program with me i was like yep sure yep. do <laughs> so i mean that's the great thing about it nowadays and it's i always i call it now it's covid adaptability that's what you've got to do you're creating opportunity you have to i mean in order for, i mean the, the the amount of gyms the, the amount of gym owners that have decided to sit on their hands during COVID and shrug their shoulders and play the victim card is mind boggling right. to me because every day I meet and talk to people like you who are doing the complete opposite and thriving. Right. And I sit yeah. in the middle now as like consultant slash, you know, I, I look at these different gyms and I say, here's a model of excellence and progression and adaptability and it can be done. Why are you sitting down? Why are you not doing the work? And then, you know, what ends up happening? I mean, how we, we had a ton. I remember, I think, April, May, it was about May when we were told that about 50 affiliates had closed in the greater Southern California area. And I just thought, 50? That's not just 50 gym owners that said, no, thank you. Those were gym owners that lost coaches. Those were gym owners that lost easily 100 members per gym. The members have lost. Now yes. they got to scan it. And that's hard when I'm coming to you for a few years and you close. Now I've got to put myself back out there again and go learn how to trust again. Go find sure. someone again. Man, that broke my heart. That totally Wait. broke my heart. You, you said it. I mean, when we talked about it earlier, it's that, is that when people are in, in this obstacle, and I, and I always say this now, I've been really working on this, that I think it's true that this is a time of opportunity. But you got to have faith and you got to believe in yourself as, a, as an owner, as a coach, uh, because those people are relying on us. So I, I give you a great example. I do um, instant, instant messages, video messages to every single member. I do two Facebook lives a week for my TFW. I do an Instagram live for Parisi because here's why. They, when they hear that, when, I when you take the time to be engaged in them. The, number one, they love you for it because it's legitimate. But number two also is that you're creating trust and belief. They need us right now. More, and more, I don't care, more, not, maybe not necessarily, not the healthcare industry, our, our, our first responders, everything like that are probably the most important people right now. But coaches aren't that far behind because people's entire psyche is right now being tested. And yep. they need somebody, they need coaches. They need people to tell them, hey, it will be okay. And it Even will get, and we will be, we will be back together again. Yes. Yeah. I, so I, I, 
to echo your your uh, those Facebook lives, Instagram lives, if we could project those out to the greater good, man. Do, so do you do um, like coach development on behalf of Parisi or do you do coach development on behalf of TFW or, or both? So it's really coach development on the behalf of Parisi. Um, okay. it, it's so now on a, on a smaller scale of TFW, but Martin does, Martin Rooney does an unbelievable job in our network of motivating us every week we have a war room uh that's what he calls it and it is literally a half an hour of power everybody contributing um and, and actually what i've noticed is his leadership of tfw dramatically shifted in march and he became very coach oriented as opposed to really promoting the, the the brand is always being promoted but now he's promoting the coaches within it the Parisi model, yeah, I, I've been doing, and I did this on my own, Eric, and the Parisi approached me, but I just said, hey, I'm doing Facebook Lives. Any coach want to jump that wants to jump on every week, I'm going to do something motivational for you guys so that they know, not training, motivation. Like, we need that. You need to understand that you right. matter. Right. Yep. Then they approached me and said, hey, could you do it on our HQ page, on our Instagram? Right. And I got to tell you, like, I'm just learning. You're going to laugh. Don't, well, don't laugh. But I, I'm just really starting to feel comfortable with Instagram. Like, finally, you know. There's a, a tech learning curve. But yep. once you get that, man, you can get out vision, mission, and purpose, motivation, direction, all like, man, you can get that as far as folks have signal. So and true. What I, we, we had a conversation with a coach uh, last week on In the Trenches. And uh, the message that I conveyed to her was that she was fully unaware of, the, of her reach and um, even people that you wouldn't even think of was paying attention to what she was saying. And it's just so impressive that folks are, are, you may not even know who's listening, who's watching, who's paying attention, but you are literally guaranteed to be changing at least some person's life every time you get on. I love it. It's true. Guaranteed. So, so true. let's then flip. So I, definitely uh, believe that I understand our offerings today in your facility. What is it and, you know, why did you feel so necessary to bring it into your camp? So say that one more time, Eric, you froze there. Sorry, I was going to say, since I understand Parisi, now right. let's, let's take a look at training for how does that benefit you and or your clientele? Yeah, so, so what TFW brought to me was, uh, I, I recognized, like I said, back in 2009, uh, that TFW represented so much more to the adult population. We weren't addressing the adult population. And all of a sudden, now we were able to address an adult population, the parents of the kids that we were involved with. And that was very important to me, Eric, to be able to do that. So what it let, let now, me Go ahead. Is that because kids only and now TFW yes. was your adult conference of kids, right? Correct. Correct. Right. And, and okay. so it was very important for me um, to to grow that element of my business. Cause I recognized right away, Hey, here's a part of our industry that we weren't acknowledging. We weren't doing that. And training for warriors brought that. And what I loved about it is because it was from Martin, it was still built on the principles of Parisi, the character development, right. the core values. So what that did for me was open up an entire new segment of the population. But, but here's something even further. What it did for me, Eric was now, I could reach a different part of the community. So I'm a very big believer in fundraising and TFW is built on fundraising. So I was able to now channel my kind of my, my need to help other people in a different direction. I championed the cause for abused children uh, and started to go, I actually traveled to other Parisis and other TFWs to raise money for kids and abuse awesome. kids. And also, TFW had a global reach, a global community, because adults have more disposable income than kids do. So they could look at it and say, objectively, I can spend more money on charity. 
uh, TFW, we've set world records for, for charity. We set a world record for the most amount of weight lifted in an hour, uh, deadlifted in an hour. We lifted close to 4 million pounds in an hour. Jesus. Just Superheroes. Yeah, it was amazing. We were dressed as superheroes, but we raised money for pediatric cancer. And that we set a world record in the most amount of people doing a push up at the same minute at the same time all over the world. And the, the reach was incredible. My first, the first things I wanted to do at each of my new facilities was run fundraisers. And we did that. And we chose something within our community. Within our, within our TFW community, our familia, as we call it, in order right. to raise money for specific individuals. And I, I want to tell you a very touching story for me. So my girlfriend and I went down to Virginia Beach because I was certifying a Parisi staff in Virginia Beach. That's they had that, that horrible shooting in the courthouse. Uh, and they lost members to that shooting. They asked me at a fundraiser on a Friday night to speak. And I, I'm not one to shy away from speaking. If I'm asked to do something, I'm going to do it. I happened to be wearing my TFW shirt that night, just going down there, got up, did the whole speech, didn't realize one of the survivors was in the audience. Wow. And, I talked, and, and the focus was the love that that community brought, the love that they brought, uh, and how they were able to do that, because what it did was no amount of hate, no amount of hate can stop that in a community. Agreed. From that, because of the, we talked about TFW, I used some TFW stories in that. I talked about some different things. They are now a TFW affiliate on top wow. of being Greasy Speed School and one of the most successful gyms in the history of Virginia Beach, Waring's Gym. And to me, it all started with someone asking another coach to help. And I ha I, it's my calling. I'm supposed to be there. I was supposed to be that specific senior Parisi coach to do that because it just, that's I'm supposed to be there. And that's what I think. And then what TFW has done is it's, if, if I told you the reactions of the people, and I'm sure as you know, as a former CrossFit owner, and you know what the impact of culture means to people, they it's so fantastic. desperately want it. They totally. so desperately want it. They spend so much time focusing their energies on their kids and their spouses that they forget about themselves. That's our job to make them feel good. And then if you, I get so passionate about this. If, if, if you do that and you build culture and you build that, you will help more people than you can possibly imagine. And uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting a little, I get a little choked up about it, Eric, because it means so much to me. We need more coaches like you imparting that knowledge and that experience so that that, you know, that, that goosebump feeling on your arms when you speak of, you're speaking of truth and real experience. You're not speaking of just fluff and pats no. on the back and, you know, participation nonsense. Like you have significantly changed people's lives and passed on a feeling and a belonging. That's not done very well. At, at a lot of levels, you know, right. so I totally can empathize with that dude sitting in the audience, like hearing you speak, you were right place, right time. And you were the right messenger to deliver that message. I, man, I, I wish more folks will, uh, would connect with you personally. Um, so how, how can they find you? If people are interested in either Parisi, um, or they're interested in talking to you, or interested in information about training for warriors, Sure. Um, give us a couple of connections real quick before we wrap up here today. Yeah. I mean, on Instagram, go get, look out for me at Eric Stephen Mitchell. Uh, okay. They can go on my personal website. It's coach Eric Mitchell.com. They can reach out to me. I, I know you, that everybody says you shouldn't have these Gmail accounts, but I got one. So <laughs> they can, they can reach out. It's, <laughs> I know it's uh, emitchell.pariseyspeedschool at gmail.com. Uh, I am, I'm an open book, Eric, if anybody, and I mean it, if they want to contact me, I want them to contact me and, and talk about different things. They can talk about coaching. We can talk about culture. You can talk about Parisi, you can talk about TFW, whatever it might be. As long as, here's what I tell you, anybody can make somebody tired, but can you make them great? And if you're coaching, you're making them great. That's going on the shirt, man. That's going to be the next quote on the shirt. Exactly. Exactly.
Awesome. If you could use today's platform and communicate one final parting statement to a struggling gym owner or a struggling coach or a struggling trainer, what words of advice or words of wisdom could you provide? Yeah, I would say that no matter what, obstacles are designed to be either climbed over, climbed, dug under, gone around, or gone through. And the bottom line is you better believe in yourself, believe in the mission that you've established. It's about you. It's not about what people deadlift or people bench or what they, it's what you've created. But if you don't believe in yourself and you don't have faith in what you're doing as a coach, then you've lost sight of your passion. Right. That's what I'd have to say. Fantastic. Thank you so much, coach. I sincerely appreciate your time today. Well, I, I'm honored to be on, Eric. I really, truly appreciate it. And, and uh, thank you. Thank you for having me on. You are absolutely welcome. I can't wait to continue our journey and our relationship together. I've got a lot to learn from you, my friend. I love it. Well, I got one thing to say. There's a word that we use in TFW that's a Finnish word that means I got this. And you got to say it like this because I'm going to be loud and I'm going to say it. It's halusa, which means I got this. Halusa. I got this. I love it. I love it. That's going to be the, that's going to be the title of today's episode. And folks are going to have to dig in till the end to figure out what it means. Perfect. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, make sure you like our channel, subscribe, and check out our other videos right here.